In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use differentiation to identify the turning points of a function. Now, by the turning points, I mean what we see here. We have a turning point where the gradient goes from being positive to negative, and we have a turning point here where the gradient goes from being negative to positive. Essentially, what we have at a turning point is we have a gradient equal to zero, meaning at that point there, the graph is flat, and at this point here, the graph is flat. So we can use differentiation to identify where the turning points occur, and then we can use the second derivative to find out whether we have a local maximum. And by a local maximum, we see that on the left-hand side here, where the value of y reaches a maximum value, or whether we have a local minimum, as we see on the right-hand side, where the graph reaches a localized minimum. And it's a local minimum because the graph may well reach a lower value further over here on the left-hand side, if we were to continue to look at lower values of x. So it's a local minimum because it's the minimum point of this section here of the graph. And this one on the left is a local maximum because it's the maximum on that section of the graph. It doesn't mean it's the absolute maximum. It means it's the maximum in that section of the graph. So the function that we're going to be looking at for this example is the one in the top left-hand corner there. We have y equals a third x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. Okay, so we have y equals 1 third x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. Now, in order to determine where the gradient is 0, the first thing that we need to do is to differentiate that function. So we're going to find the derivative dy by dx of that function. So if we start with the term on the left, we have a third x cubed. So we're going to multiply the coefficient by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So that will give us x squared. Next, we've got minus 4x squared. Well, minus 4x squared is going to differentiate to minus 8x. And plus 12x is going to differentiate to plus 12. When we differentiate the plus 5 or any constant, it just equals 0. We're also going to find the second derivative because we'll use the second derivative to determine whether we have a local minimum or a local maximum. So we have d squared y by dx squared as our notation. And that equals, well, x squared differentiates to 2x and minus 8x just differentiates to minus 8. So we have our first derivative x squared minus 8x plus 12, and we have our second derivative, 2x minus 8. Now to determine our turning points, we know that the gradient at a turning point must be zero. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to find where the function x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals zero. Now what we can do is we can factorize this. There is a tutorial on factorizing quadratics in the algebra topic, but essentially what we need to do is split this into two brackets. And we're going to have x plus or minus a number times x plus or minus a number when we factorise that quadratic. Well, what we're looking for is we're looking for two numbers which add together to give minus 8 and multiply together to give 12. Now, because we're looking for two numbers which multiply together to give a positive but add together to give a negative, we know that both of these numbers are going to be a negative number. And then we're looking for two negative numbers which add together to give minus eight and multiply together to give 12. Well, it could be minus seven and minus one. That would give us minus eight, but minus seven times minus one is plus seven and we need plus 12. So let's try another combination. Let's go for minus six and minus two. Well, minus six minus two is minus eight. And also, minus 6 times minus 2 is plus 12. Therefore, we know that these two numbers are minus 6 and minus 2. Once again, there is a tutorial on how to factorise quadratics, if that's something you could do with refreshing your memory on. OK, well, in order for this function of x squared minus 8x plus 12 to equal 0, x minus 6 times x minus 2 must equal 0. Now there's going to be two values of x that make this zero because one value of x will make the left-hand bracket zero and another value of x will make 
the right hand bracket zero. So to make the left hand bracket zero, x must equal six, because six minus six is zero. And to make the right hand bracket zero, x must equal two, because two minus two is zero. Therefore, the two values of x that make our derivative equal to zero are x equals six and x equals two. This means that we have a turning point at x equals six, and we have a turning point at x equals two, because that's where the gradient zero. Now, if we want to determine which one of these is a local maximum and which one's a local minimum, we refer back to our second derivative. And what we're looking for is whether the second derivative is positive or negative. Because if we have a positive second derivative, we have a function that's going to be increasing, which is called a local minimum. And if our second derivative comes out as negative, we have a function which is decreasing, or a local maximum. The second derivative tells us about the rate of change of the gradient. If the rate of change of gradient is positive, we have a local minimum. If the rate of change of gradient is negative, we have a local maximum. Now all we need to do is we need to plug our two values of x into the second derivative. So if we plug the 6 in first of all, we get d squared y by dx squared equals 2 times 6 minus 8. Well, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 8 is 4. Therefore, when x equals 6, we have a second derivative which is positive or increasing. Therefore, we have a local minimum. Let's repeat that for when x equals 2. So we've got d squared y by dx squared equals 2 times 2 minus 8. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 8, minus 4. So what this shows is that when x equals 2, the second derivative is negative. If the second derivative is negative, it means the function's decreasing, so we have a local maximum. So we have a local maximum when x equals 2, and we have a local minimum when x equals 6. If we just look back at our original function, we can see what we've said there is true, because when x equals 2, we have a local maximum. And when x equals 6, we have a local minimum. So that is how you can find the turning points of a function using differentiation.